government. Now, um, the uh, the uh, money uh, interest in this uh, it seems to be represented by Robert Mercer, the head of Renaissance Technologies, another – I'm afraid he looks like a reactionary billionaire. Um, he's got a family foundation. He has given uh, $11 million, according to the Washington Post, to a super PAC associated with Ted Cruz. The U.S. arm of SCL in London is Cambridge Analytica. Um, and they, uh, they believe that they can... Uh, they can they call it election management okay election management not a campaign in that sense it's election management they can target individuals with with uh, pinpoint precision um, let's see uh, then they give you a list of all the places this is from the uh, SCL website they talk about the fact that they've been in South Africa uh, in Kenya they seem to have been on the side of, of one of the uh, uh, one of the people in the 2013 election. I'm wondering if it's Ryla Odinga, right, of uh, the uh, Obama's guy who says he's Obama's uh, cousin. Here, this is interesting. In Nigeria in 2007, SCL said that their, the most effective strategy for the people they were backing was to to dissuade opposition supporters from voting. So what you what they did was on the day of the vote. They, they organized anti-voting, anti-poll uh, rallies in localities where the opposition party was strong, and they got out religious leaders to address them. So a lot of people came to listen, and the uh, client party seems to have won that election. Now, the person, in terms of the targets of this group, we have to look at St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Prime Minister Ralph E. Gonsalves, currently prime minister, looks like a, uh, a political fighter. Uh, so he says he was targeted in the name of foreign interests by this uh, process. In Trinidad and Tobago, it was the, quote, do so campaign, which was part of it. They've been in India. They've been in Indonesia. Uh, they say they were in the Orange Revolution in Ukraine. So we'll be uh, looking for that. Back in a minute to uh, World Crisis Radio. So just to wrap up this part about uh, the consultants who are running Ted Cruz's campaign in Iowa. This is now from Slate Magazine, 2005. Uh, they quote, uh, they write that uh, the operations center set up in the process I've described, the operations center can override all national radio and TV broadcasts in time of crisis. And this is uh, somebody from, I believe it's somebody from SCL, uh, talking about what they did in an unspecified Asian country that seems to be Nepal, where, where there was, in fact, a coup d'etat. And uh, the people who write about this uh, are uh, unanimous that SCL boasts of its ability to carry out coup d'etat. So that's uh, who's helping Ted Cruz. Now, in terms of economics, let's switch over to that here in our final segment. Um, we have this study from uh, Pew Research. The American middle class is losing ground after more than four decades of serving as the nation's economic majority, the U.S. middle class is now matched in size by those in the economic tiers above, that is the affluent, and below, the impoverished. So this is, unfortunately, uh, even a, a bigger historical watershed and turning point than what, uh, say, the uh, New York Times or, or indeed the authors of the study would, would write about. And here's the idea. The first time in the recorded history of the world that something that you can reasonably define as the middle class, and of course this, there is controversy about how do you limit that? What does it mean? Uh, but the general idea, the first time that the middle class ever became the majority of an entire national society was under the New Deal of Franklin D. Roosevelt as a direct result of things like 
the Social Security Act of 1935, the GI Bill of Rights, um, unemployment insurance, pensions, and then supplement that with the new, the Great Society of Lyndon B. Johnson, in particular, Medicare for the middle class and everybody uh, who has worked, and Medicaid run through the states and essentially to serve uh, the poorest uh, people. So uh, we want to look at this. Now, the, the definition used here uh, in this uh, Pew Research study is that uh, the idea is, for example, if you're talking about uh, the middle class, uh, one person is already in the middle class, according to this, at 24 thousand one hundred and seventy three dollars a year and it goes up to fifty four thousand fifty three that's middle class upper class single person seventy two thousand to one hundred and sixty two thousand per per year so the thesis is that the ones that are below that below the twenty four uh, and above the fifty four for one person are uh, now more than the middle class so the middle class is now a minority and the great historical transformation of the world, a majority middle class society created by Franklin D. Roosevelt and the New Deal, that has now been rolled back. That era has momentarily ended. And of course, as you can hear from those figures, those figures are really not realistic either. You're not really in the middle class with $25,000 a year if you're an individual. This is a, a fiction. So in reality, what they're talking about has happened some time ago. Now, the, stu the coverage that I'm seeing on this is <coughs> that they, they try to assume that this goes back 40 years, right? So that would be 1975 to 2015. Of course, that's ridiculous. It started several decades earlier, and it ended uh, maybe a decade uh, earlier than they say. So this is this a very much a slowed down vision of what is happening. But you can see the idea. Now, we of the Tax Wall Street Party, especially at this time of year, <laughs> regard this as our principal strategic responsibility is to transform this destructive and wrong direction of the U.S. economy. And you know what we're in favor of in order to change it. We have got to break the excessive power of Wall Street. Now, that involves taxation, but we would propose to break the excessive power of Wall Street where it's politically most feasible. The Wall Street argument is we don't pay taxes. We're like the French Revolution before uh, the, Fr the French aristocracy before the French Revolution. This is a political loser. So this is where you want to attack. Right? They can always say, oh, taxation, why single us out? Fine. But how about why signal you out, signal, single you out for subsidy in the form of no taxation when everybody who produces, who works and does anything else, they're hit with a sales tax and you say no. And the sales tax involved is, of course, the 1% Wall Street sales tax, a tax of 1% on all turnover on all U.S. financial markets, stocks, bonds, obviously not federal bonds, but corporate bonds and other bonds. Um, and then, of course, you've got um, derivatives, right? The biggest single piece of this entire thing is a 1% tax on derivatives. Derivatives caused the crash of 2008 by taking shocks that would have been manageable and multiplying them through this multiplication apparatus and, and resonance apparatus of the, uh, the derivatives. And then, of course, foreign uh, exchange transactions. That's another one, right? You want to do foreign exchange swaps? Wonderful. 1% goes to the federal treasury. We've always talked about sending half of that money on to the states. It would create a level playing field. Right now, as they say, speculation is subsidized, production is punished. That's insane. We have to essentially subsidize production, if you want to look at it that way, uh, and make sure that the uh, punishing or the burden falls for a change on the purely speculative, parasitical, and sociopathic uh, elements, right? The, uh, the great uh, derivatives fraud. So that's one side. And then even more essential, right? The, the bedrock of the entire question is that public credit 
has to be publicly controlled through the only political process we have, which is the one specified in the Constitution and which is deeply rooted uh, in the American psyche and the American people. So this means take the Federal Reserve ultimately piece by piece or any way you can, take it away from a committee of bankers meeting in secret who decide interest rates. We just had it this week, right? Poor Yellen, stupid, incompetent, bungling Yellen, right? The banality of evil, if there ever was it. She's now raised these interest rates by one quarter percent. Surprise. We, the Republicans were talking about the triad. The triad here is the three points of a stimulus going on, stimulus and supplemental, 1.5 trillion, long gone. The QE123 ended a little bit more than a year ago, and then the 0% interest rates, which ended this week. So right now, the U.S. economy is nude. It has no armor to protect itself against anything. And you should indeed now prepare for the somewhat likely eventuality of um, extremely turbulent events. Think about doing that now for your, for your own self-protection, right? Obviously, don't throw everything one way and then the other, but always diversify in such a way that you can survive what is uh, coming. So the U.S. middle class is losing out. So what we want is the uh, distribution of credit and the interest rates and the approved categories of lending, everything about public credit comes from the National Bank of the United States, right? The Federal Reserve, bad idea because it's controlled by bankers. It should not be. It's got to serve the entire economy. We have seen these banks are not the whole economy. They're a parasitic interest society and against them. This has to end. So six trillion dollars, four percent.